Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to another edition of what I've been watching. This is a kind of series on my channel, I guess now <laughs> that there's a second video um, that I started a few months back where I discussed the movies and mostly TV shows to be honest that I had been watching in that time and today we're going to be doing the same thing. We're just going to have a casual chat, okay, about the TV shows that I have been enjoying lately. Now in October, October there was a bit of a gap content wise on my channel because so much was going on it was my birthday month I went on a birthday trip and I feel like when I got back from that trip all of a sudden <laughs> all of a sudden I was met with like a ton of films tv shows just a bombardment of content that I had missed out on and there were all of these video ideas that were floating around in my head that I couldn't pursue because time had run out on them basically because I like to in theory <laughs> produce reviews that are you know near about the time that the films and tv shows come out so that I've been failing at that recently which is why this video is happening today so today I'm basically going to try and play catch up as I mentioned I would do in my video a couple of weeks ago thanking all of you guys for 3,000 subscribers. I mentioned there that there were a ton of TV shows and films that I have continued watching even if I haven't produced reviews of them and today we're going to be squashing a bunch of mini reviews together to discuss what I've missed. But before we get into all of that good stuff as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. Now without further ado let's get into what I've been watching. So yeah recently I have been enjoying way more TV shows than films and first one up that we're going to be discussing today let's not waste any time on this one because this was a major hit that I wasn't able to cover on my channel previously of course I am talking about Squid Game. Um okay <laughs> okay this sleeper hit that like took over the world this global sensation this goes back to what I've seen said in previous videos including my review of Lupin and my review of um, Money Heist where I talked about how one of the kind of um, benefits that Netflix has brought about in terms of the international film industry is that now people all around the world are exposed to international films and international TV shows from the comfort of their own home. They no longer have to go into cinemas or like artisan cinemas, specialist cinemas to watch foreign films for instance now people get recommended a bunch of Netflix series from Korea from the Netherlands from Germany from France all from the comfort of their own home that they can check out and even though Netflix of course is like overstuffed with content and oftentimes the majority of these international shows go unwatched by international audiences elsewhere there are a few that crack through the surface there are a few that break through to international audiences and become a huge hit as I mentioned Lupin is one of them Money Heist was one before even Lupin and now we have Squid Game that takes the cake for them all Squid Game was a moment it kind of still is to some although I've kind of moved on from it <laughs> but some people are still milking the Squid Game a hype and honestly it's just phenomenal to see and it couldn't have happened to a better show the show is excellent the show is brilliant what what do you want me to say first of all the show is a commentary on capitalism my ears are perked my ears <laughs> my ears are perked you've got my attention then you have this mishmash of these like battle royale style games that are like killer like the stakes couldn't be higher you are going to die you are going to die but you're playing children's games you're playing playground games what an interesting dichotomy what an interesting contrast to have these deadly battle royale games this competition um but at the same time the individual games themselves represent innocence represent the good old days back when you didn't have to worry about things like you know financial circumstances as is the case for a lot of these contestants or most of these contestants because they are in so much debt i think that is a genius premise 
and I think it was done so well in the series. I love the fact that a lot of these actors portraying these beloved characters have gotten so much attention off of the back of the series as well as the um, showrunner and writer himself. Like this, this is just so great. This is just so wonderful and again it speaks to the Netflix effect when it comes to making the international film industry feel smaller and more connected than ever with audiences across the globe enjoying content that isn't in their native tongue. I love this phenomena that Netflix has created. I hope other streaming services take um, this as a lesson and they adopt the same strategy because I think it's just wonderful for these international film markets to have this advantage. I will say though sticking to Squid Game for a second here although I can't talk about it for too long because we have lots to go through. Um, the ending was a little bit mm, wonky for me. We need to work on our landings. I feel like the journey was phenomenal. The journey was brilliant. That first um, red light green light uh, challenge where it's revealed what the real stakes of this game are that like that made my heart stop. I was like what is that ketchup or is that man dead? Is that man dead? <laughs> that is insane. So yeah, the ride, the journey was brilliant. Maybe we need to work on the landing because, you know, spoiler alert for Squid Game if you haven't watched it for whatever reason, um, spoilers. But essentially in the end, it turns out that it was the old man that created Squid Game and it's supposed to be this like big revelation and I did enjoy I will say as a, an accompaniment I did enjoy a bunch of YouTube videos that were like breaking down all of the signs and the clues um for us to why it makes sense that the old man was the creator of the game the fact that he was number one you know there's a bunch of YouTube videos kind of breaking the series down which I really enjoyed um but I didn't need to really know who made the games I didn't really need to know that either like they kept it a mystery and like that wasn't the point of the show or if they were really going to commit to diving into the origins of the show they would show that as opposed to having this halfway point where at the very end they show that the old guy created the games we don't really understand you know why or how we don't really understand how it all started um i just feel like that wasn't necessary for season one of this show perhaps something that we can explore further in season two especially considering that he dies at the very end so now there's nothing to look forward to when it comes to his involvement in season two okay Okay, so moving on from Squid Game, that show very much deserved its own review. <laughs> if I had been around, I definitely would have reviewed the series when I watched it, but unfortunately we need to move on. Okay, so next up we have a series that actually one of you guys asked me about underneath my uh, video thanking you guys for 3,000 subscribers. One of you guys mentioned Made and you want to hear my thoughts on this Netflix series and I have to say Made is one of the very best shows that I have watched this entire year. I absolutely loved Made. Now first of all, a little fact about me, I work in um, the legal field, I work in a law firm that deals with a lot of the um, issues and a lot of the cases that are explored in Made. So this is something that is very close to me in like my actual real world. <laughs> so when I saw this series I was really curious to see how it would depict these sort of circumstances in this series of events that play out when domestic abuse or domestic violence is reported and you have a victim like Alex who is portrayed by Margaret Qualey here and especially a victim who has a child. I was really fascinated to see how the series would delve into all of that considering it's so close to uh, what I do um, for my job and I have to say that this series continued to impress me when it came to how it depicted the character of Alex and what she was going through, the domestic abuse that she was going through during the time, as well as other themes of poverty and the disadvantages that poverty brings, as well as exploring what it means to go through such a difficult and challenging time without having any support network that you can rely on 
all of these elements that Alex has to deal with make for some gut-wrenching, heart-breaking scenes throughout this series that honestly had me so, you know, emotional throughout, but I think elevated the show and made it feel so real because we were dealing with a character who literally hit rock bottom and no matter what she did to try and climb herself and her daughter out of this horrific circumstance, it seemed as though all of the cards all of the cards on the planet were stacked against her. Now I could say a ton about this series' exploration of domestic abuse and specifically how it's looked upon in the um, justice system. Like this series explores the American justice system or whatever specific state they're in. But you know, I work in the UK and we're dealing with the um, English and Welsh justice system in my case. But still there are a lot of similarities there as well as some of the themes that are explored. Um, like for example, this idea of of child arrangements which is something that I'm very familiar with and you know even though something horrific has happened to Alex and there's been abuse towards her the standing of her child is a separate issue that the law looks at in a very interesting way a very controversial way and her having to navigate that whilst not knowing anything about law not having any representation herself at the beginning there i mean it's just it's heartbreaking to see because it's like a minefield it's like how how was she supposed to deal with all of this at once and you know the lack of empathy the lack of consideration that's afforded her i think is a little bit extreme i'd like to think it's a little bit extreme um but honestly it's not wholly unreal realistic um so yeah the, the circumstances are truly heartbreaking but as someone who works in this field it's realistic the the depiction of Alex's circumstances here are unfortunately so so realistic and that's what I really appreciated about this series. Another thing that I absolutely loved about this series were the performances. The performances here are insane. Margaret Qualley should be nominated for an Oscar, not even for an Emmy. <laughs> not even for an Emmy. I don't care it's a TV show, please. She should be nominated for an Oscar. Are you kidding? She was phenomenal in this series. Are you joking? she played this role with such dignity because the thing is it would have been so easy to have this character be reduced to just like a sob story like oh we feel so sorry for her but she doesn't want pity like she just wants to live a decent life with her daughter away from this horrible abusive person and just to start over and she does whatever it takes to do so she starts cleaning houses she takes all of the crap that people throw her way the disrespect you know being treated like she's less than nothing and she does all of that because she knows that her daughter is at the center of her world and she needs to take care of her and Margaret Qualley does that superbly and then alongside her stars Andy McDowell who is her mother in real life and I think that was superb casting because obviously you can see the familial um, relationship there but at the same time the way that the two actresses portray these characters and this contentious relationship relationship between mother and daughter is extraordinary and in the case of Andy McDowell's character Paula she is Alex's mother but she suffers from um, mental health issues and so unfortunately she's not able to be there for her child in these most difficult circumstances and Alex finds herself having to do everything for herself and for her child with no support network to fall back on like she literally has no one that she can rely on and in the meantime as well she also has to worry about her mother because her mother is very vulnerable and she has people who are taking advantage of her so Alex's attention is just all over the place during a time when she should be the one getting support she should be the one getting all of the love and attention that she needs to get through this difficult time instead she's having to spread herself paper thin to take care of her loved ones and then you also have Nick Robinson portraying the trash bag that is Sean 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 is like, Sean sucks. Okay, like I don't even have words for how much Sean sucks. Sean 
ugh, Sean is awful, okay, but Nick Robinson did a great job, like, because he's supposed to be awful, he's supposed to be the scum of the earth, and yes, there are times when you kind of feel bad for him, yes, there are times when you empathise with the character, but that's the point, that's the point, because that's reality, people aren't evil 100% of the time, but you get that reminder of the evil when they do stuff like what Sean does in this series, the abuse that he um, commits towards Alex, and that's when you're reminded of his true nature and his character and why Alex needs to get the fudge out of there as soon as possible so the series just it's just so excellent it's just so excellent at tackling this topic even if it is truly heartbreaking to see this character and her daughter go through the circumstances that she does next up on my list we have season four of dear white people i'm not gonna stay on this for too long don't worry i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna linger on this one for too long season four was a 90s musical jukebox musical situation why why i guess they could just do what they wanted because they knew the series was coming to an end and like pretty much no one cared anyway so yeah make it a 90s jukebox musical like fine i guess dear white people i was gonna make a video on it but truly like no one cares <laughs> like i did some research on who cares about dear white people and like no one um dear white people it was an interesting concept um, very preachy though, I mean if there was anything that was going to be preachy it's a series called Dear White People, right? Uh, very preachy, but at least in season one it had a purpose. At least in season one it had a point, it had an interesting story, it was doing some interesting things with, you know, changing perspectives um, in terms of each episode being told from a different perspective of a different character. It, it was doing something but then as the seasons went on it lost sight of what it was, it didn't really know what to do with these characters and on top of that it introduced some weird elements like you know these these cults and these mysteries and it just lost sight of what it was and what it was supposed to be um and it just became so muddled so dear white people just ugh. but i did watch the final season because i'm a completionist and i'm glad it's <laughs> i'm glad it's done okay uh that 90s musical situation no uh but again it's done now so we never have to think about it again so next up this is a series that i've been talking about for a while now for a couple of years now um but the fx show what we do in the shadows which is of course the tv version of the uh 2014 movie i love what we do in the shadows i think it's genius <laughs> it is so consistently hilarious i love these characters to to my core i just feel like the series is just easy fun really really clever really really funny with some really cool cameos and i really enjoyed season three i think it's on yeah i really enjoyed season three i can't wait to see season four the ending of season three though i'm not going to spoil it because i want you guys to go watch what we do in the shadows if you know the ending then comment down below and i'll reply but the ending of season three is like heartbreaking like i literally gasped <laughs> <laughs> I literally gasped. I was like, yeah, bro, no. Like, I, I was genuinely upset, but I can't wait to see what happens in season four. I'm guessing there's going to be a season four. There must be, right? Like, it doesn't look like an expensive show to make. So please make a season four FX. Um, and yeah, I would highly recommend you guys check out what we do in the shadows if you're not watching it already. But I am a big fan. And then next up, we have season two of Nora from Queens. This is an okay series starring Aquafina, uh, who portrays the character of Nora. And it's basically about her life in Queens, New York. Uh, she's this, I think, 30 something year old character who isn't quite at the place in her life that she wanted to be. And she feels like she's kind of floating in the wind a little bit with no real direction. She's trying to figure out what she wants to do, uh, whilst at the same time seeing her peers kind of excel and uh, move on in their careers and in their life while she's still living in her grandmother's house with her 
her grandma and her father so it's very much that kind of vibe it's very low-key it's not offensive in any way it's just you know it's a, a pretty good show i wouldn't say it's on the same level comedy wise as like a what we do in the shadows but it's you know it's fun it's possible i would say and this past season interestingly enough was one of those seasons that actually discussed the pandemic <laughs> um, because there are certain shows that have like decided not to acknowledge the pandemic whatsoever they're in their own little universe and bubble and i think there are positives to that um, but then there are shows that uh, have decided to uh, basically act like the series is taking place in our real world and have incorporated the pandemic as part of the season that was shot during this year and this is another one of those shows and i think it's actually quite funny the way that they kind of um, explore the pandemic uh, because okay just a small spoiler for those of you who haven't watched Nora from Queens and really want to watch it um, but she ends up in this commune in this like cult and so just before the pandemic hits she's like having fun in this cult she's become fully indoctrinated but then afterwards uh, she finds herself having to go back home and like the world has just completely changed and I, I actually really enjoyed that idea of like someone who was so far removed and also had all of the her communications controlled by the heads of the cult it's a whole thing um all of a sudden discovering that there's a whole pandemic it's kind of like um how those contestants on like big brother and other reality shows didn't realize what was going on earlier in the pandemic and then when they were told it was like what what's happening um that's kind of what this show plays on which i think was a really fun twist okay so next one up we have only murders in the building now i actually enjoyed um only murders in the building i thought it was pretty good um i didn't i didn't love it um i did find it strange still even though they go above and beyond to explain the whole thing i did still find it strange that we have martin short steve martin and selena gomez as the stars of this show <laughs> I found that bizarre I'm sorry and again it's like a whole thing in the show where she's the only young one she doesn't understand their references and they don't understand how she speaks and social media and all of that and what brings them together is their love of podcasts and especially a true crime podcast so it's cute like it's cute and I do believe the friendship that forms between them throughout this series I think it is quite convincing and they do have a great chemistry um, as a team dynamic but it's still a bit strange <laughs> in terms of the show itself i think the mystery was done decently well there were a few random red herrings that like they were so random that they could have never been that like for example sting makes an appearance like he has a cameo in the show and again that's another thing where it's like who is this directed towards because you know those of us who are in the selena gomez camp in terms of generation uh we wouldn't really know who sting is i mean i only know <laughs> i only know who sting is because of the simpsons episode that i had on cassette back in the day that i used to rinse out i used to watch so much but other than that like i don't really know much about sting so the idea that like he would be a main suspect for the crime first of all i never bought into that because he's celebrity like why would they do that ruin his reputation like that and secondly it wasn't this big thing where it was like oh my god bts <laughs> the ets are the suspects of the crime like it stings so just like uh, i guess that's a big deal <laughs> not to me and again like who is this show directed towards but then at the very very end of the show we do have that major twist where uh, selena gomez's character apparently killed the kind of landlord the landlady of the apartments um she didn't do that like we know she's not gonna go to prison for that but i guess we're excited we're interested to see what comes about that um in season two of the series and so yeah I'll, I'll be tuning into season two i think i hope it's better than season one if it's any worse then i'll tune out but yeah i guess i'm looking forward to <laughs> only murders in the village it's fine like it's like it's pretty good i'll say it's pretty good okay so next up we have yet another series that i wanted to do a review on and that is netflix's you season three what a mad mad show 
<laughs> what a mad mad show full of mad mad people um i had a lot of passionate thoughts about you the weekend that it came out and then afterwards i just kind of deflated and i was like okay well that happened and we need to move on now um but it was a bit of a wild ride i just i got so frustrated because love in season two was like a viable adversary was like a worthy adversary um to joe like she she was cunning she was clever she was several steps ahead of him but in season three she just became like this pathetic killing machine like i know that's oxymoronic but she just she just relied on him to clean up all of her messes and these messes were made in like fits of rage that were so irresponsible and were just so not reflective of the character that we were introduced to in season two like yes love had fits of rage and she killed people in season two but she was also incredibly calculating and she again she was able to see things far into the future to kind of orchestrate events uh, that played out where joe believed that he was in control but in reality it was love pulling the strings all along but here it's like she did an oopsie <laughs> she did an oopsie and killed people and then was like oh, joe i need you to fix this for me <laughs> and it's like what what is this it's ridiculous now i will say i did appreciate the fact that we finally saw the one person that could rein joe in the one person that could stop him kind of from his stalkerish tendency <laughs> he should be locked up by the way I just want to make that clear they should both be behind bars although you know one of them can't even uh, anymore because she's dead anyways um I liked the fact that the one person that was able to um kind of rein Joe in and and make him want to be a better person was his son like throughout the entire season he explains that you know he wants to be a better person for the sake of his son he doesn't want his son to grow up in the same circumstances that he did that kind of led to this behavioral problem and so i enjoyed seeing the commitment that he had to trying to be a better father of course like it's joe so he was doing it in this weird bizarre murdery roundabout way but still that was a very consistent theme that i think was explored very well in the show i just wish that they didn't do such a disservice to the character of love in order to carry this out okay so next one up on my list this is the penultimate show that we'll be talking about we're almost done i promise um but next one up is season two of ted lasso yet another series that i wanted to do a review on but i was away during the finale so didn't get a chance to i love ted lasso i love ted lasso i will say season two wasn't perfect season two wasn't immaculate i don't think it had the same impact as season one where everyone was just shocked at how excellent this series is and we were like hold on this is a gem like apple tv you're onto something here and clearly they realized that too because they promptly renewed it for season two and three but um i do still think that season two was very charming it had its wonderful moments i think the difference here though is that it also dared to be a little less than you know cheery it dared to explore some darker themes it dared to depict these characters in a less than perfect light we have ted himself who turns kind of mean and abrasive at times he's going through a very difficult um time especially with the therapy storyline where he rejects therapy he doesn't want to deal with it and then we find out why he has such a contentious relationship with exploring his mental health Health, and it's because of his father having committed suicide when he was younger so that was a really interesting thing to explore on the show but it did mean that we saw different shades of the character that um, we didn't really get to see in season one where he was kind of really cheery and um, still mental health was a theme there but it wasn't as much of a thing as it is in season two and then we have the character of Nathan Nathan okay so here's the thing at the time I was like I hate Nathan I hate Nathan Nathan's head grew to the size of a football pitch <laughs> of an actual football pitch during season two he started to buy his own height to the nth degree at the time it was really difficult to watch the show and have this like 
truly horrible character. Like in season one, he was so lovable. You felt bad for Nathan, but then he started attacking like the other assistants uh, to the coaches um, that they got. Um, Billy is his name, I can't remember his name, but the way that he started bullying him, the way that he started disrespecting people and like looking down on people, just having this huge chip on his shoulder. It, it just made him such a repulsive character. But in hindsight, after seeing the finale, after seeing that he has joined uh, Rebecca's ex-husband's new team, I think this was a phenomenal villain's origin story. A phenomenal villainous origin story. I've been banging on about how there aren't enough good villains uh, coming out of TV shows and films these days. I think Nathan <laughs> from Ted Lasso is an excellent villain because he's truly become despicable and honestly it makes sense that he would join the other side. I think it was pretty excellent in hindsight. And then we have Rebecca herself. Now in this season we see her you know try to break away from the ruins that is her previous marriage um, and try to pursue a romantic relationships to start dating again and to have confidence in herself again and she ends up going out with Sam after this like whole snafu that happens where they realize that they've been texting each other all along on this um dating app and honestly like i personally didn't see it coming i personally did not see this coming but i was shipping them i was like you know what this is crazy this is weird but i kind of love it and so tell me why then did she go ahead and break sam's heart despite the fact that she she convinced me to ship this relationship she convinced me to be a supportive of this relationship relationship even though it's crazy even though it's kooky only for her to break up with Sam I was like nah <laughs> I was like nah Rebecca Rebecca now I like Rebecca okay but I love Sam like everyone loves Sam don't break up no don't do that and it was so silly that there was no real logic behind it other than this isn't really supposed to happen it isn't really supposed to last for very long so we need to end it now like it was such an abrupt ending to their relationship like literally we only got one episode where they kissed and like you know he ended up going into her house and then the next episode they broke up like it was just what <laughs> and then of course we have one of the stars of the show in roy kent and we explore his relationship with keely this season as well as the fact that he has retired from football there's this really funny gag where he ends up on a, a sky show being a commentator and he's just hilarious i think that was really clever um and ultimately he becomes a coach uh to the team which you know we all knew was going to happen even though he swore never to return and yeah i think roy kent is an excellent Excellent character but he's become a truly iconic character which is so impressive um i do think the relationship with keely stuff mm, did we need that <laughs> did we strictly need that i like keely uh, and i like roy and i like their relationship but did that need to be a subplot mm, not necessarily this idea that he would I don't know feel left out I, I guess um because she's getting so much of the limelight because of her um new app and the fact that she's a um an entrepreneur now you know fine and then in the end you know she's going to be working because she got an investor and he wants to go on this holiday fine don't really care that much though <laughs> and finally the last series on my list that i wanted to throw in here was scenes from a marriage the hbo series that starred jessica chastain and oscar isaac i've been seeing a lot of oscar isaac these days i've been seeing a lot he has been working he has been booked and busy and honestly good for him he's an excellent actor um scenes from a marriage was Mm, there were times where I was like oh this is this is capable of being excellent superb phenomenal but ultimately I was a little bit disappointed by the very end I, I don't feel like the series ever met its full potential I feel like unfortunately it suffered from um COVID season TV series syndrome in that a lot of the uh, scenes took place well, I mean they are scenes from a marriage but they took place in the marital home in these confined spaces we didn't really get to see the characters roam around the world because it was set you know filmed during the pandemic and even though that kind of worked 
works as a storytelling device uh, for the most part. I think it is refreshing to see the characters in a different environment and it kind of reminds you that they have been stuck in this certain environment for the majority of the show when they do go out. And to be clear, I think Jessica Chastain and Oscar Isaac gave great performances throughout the show. Um, and I also liked the fact that, you know, neither of the characters were perfect. At the beginning, you side with Oscar Isaac's character because Jessica Chastain's character is so purely unlikable. The way that she ends the marriage just so abruptly and she's so eager. She is literally crawling to get out of that house only for her to, you know, spoiler alert <laughs> for scenes of a marriage, only for her to come crawling back to him just when he's about to move on with his life. I think it's a really interesting exploration of these two flawed characters. And I think the actors gave great performances portraying them. But the series overall, it, it didn't rock my world. It wasn't as phenomenal as I thought it would be, even though it was very well acted. So that's it from me. Now that I told you guys what I've been watching recently, it's time for you guys to let me know what you've been watching down in the comments below and also what you'd recommend for me to check out before the year is up. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.